Hey everybody, welcome back. It's episode 10 in our pregnancy series. My name is Christy Amundsen. I am 29 weeks pregnant with my fourth pregnancy this week. And today we are going to be talking about cardiovascular exercise during pregnancy and the postpartum period. So there are many benefits to cardiovascular exercise in general for your heart health and overall health, but especially during pregnancy, some of those benefits include easing constipation, decreased risk of preeclampsia, emergency C-section, or gestational diabetes. And it also promotes a more healthy weight gain that's more gradual, and it can prepare your body for labor. Also in the postpartum period, it helps you kind of get back to that pre-pregnancy weight and a more healthier lifestyle and weight. So generally speaking, if you have exercised previously before pregnancy, you usually can continue to, to exercise although it is always good to check with your provider. If you have no other complications, generally speaking, you can continue to exercise in your same capacity or a reduced capacity. However, if you are new to exercise or if you're exercising in a different modality, for example, if you used to do weight training and now you would like to try to start doing cardiovascular training or doing some kind of a different mode of exercise, it's always good to check in with your um, doctor, midwife, whoever's managing your pregnancy. And also anytime, um, especially if you have complications in your pregnancy or um, if you have a history of preterm labor, an incompetent cervix, placenta previa in the third try, um, preeclampsia or any pregnancy induced blood pressure issues or severe anemia. Those would be conditions that you for sure would need to check in with your doctor prior to doing any exercise program. But it's always good to check in to get some pointers. So once you get clearance for, um, for incorporating that activity into your life and routine, you get to choose how you go about it. So basically you're gonna ask yourself kind of three questions and that's gonna really dictate you know, what should maybe be best for you. So number one is what is available to you? Number two is what is comfortable or non-painful for you to do. And number three is what you really enjoy. So number one, availability is really gonna largely dictate your, your available options. So for example, if, you're a membership, if you have a membership to a health club, you probably have a lot more options um, with different uh, machines and perhaps an indoor track or, or anything like that. However, um, you also want, might wanna check if you have access to a pool. So sometimes, if you're a health club member, you have the pool, but other times you can, um, you can have uh, community pools that you can pay to use or therapy pools or even some um, like skilled nur nursing facilities and things can be uh, um, open to you paying a rate for you to come in and use the pool for a weekly visit or um, ongoing membership. So explore your options that way. Also, sometimes if you're due to childcare or other reasons, you're limited to your, just your house, you know, then you'll have to explore your options, what you have at home. So if, do you have any exercise equipment at home? If you don't, do you have stairs? Or maybe you live in an apartment building where you have stairs in the apartment building that you can use. So you'll wanna figure that out first. And second, you wanna make sure that you're doing something that is comfortable to you and not aggravating or painful. Exercise should be something that maybe you don't look forward to, but certainly something that you don't hate. So you wanna do, and it kind of plays into number three where you wanna do something that you enjoy as well. So you wanna do something that, obviously if, if it's aggravating you, you probably won't enjoy it. But um, if you're, for example, really hurting when you're walking or really changing the way you're walking or limping, you probably don't want to walk on a treadmill as your form of exercise that you're choosing or walk on a track that would be not you know, the best choice for you. Same, similarly, if you were to be having a lot of pain going up and down stairs, then you probably don't wanna do like a stair stepper machine or do stairs as your, as your form of cardiovascular exercise of choice. So you wanna consider all of those things. And so now we're going to kind of go over several different kind of common things that are common modes of exercise. Uh, and I'm gonna to try to give you some pointers and tips that are more specific to pregnancy in the postpartum period. So let's go. Okay, so a couple other things to consider is 
Um, exercise can be much more motivating and actually fun if you can do it with people that you enjoy being around. So if you are able to get together with others and form you know, a walking group or some kind of an, um, an exercise group that you guys are all kind of, whether it means that you're all pregnant or even if you're not um, and you're going at a little bit lower intensity at, um, compared to your peers, uh, a lot of times that can help keep you motivated. It can be a lot more enjoyable and you can kind of get some, some peer friend time in at the same time or family time in. So that's always something to consider if it's a possibility for you. Um, generally, from a pregnancy point of view and postpartum, you wanna try to avoid anything that's really high intensity or high impact. So um, HIIT workouts are really popular right now. Um, that would be high intensity training, but anything that's really high impact that you're um, doing various jumps or um, a lot of pounding is gonna put a lot of pressure through your pelvic floor. So it's probably not the best idea to be choosing those for your mode of exercise while you're pregnant or in the postpartum period. So I would kind of stay away from those things. Overall intensity when you're exercising, you wanna make sure that, um, usually you kind of go by a talk test. So as long as you can keep having a conversation with someone, even if there wasn't someone there, you usually are pretty good about intensity. If your breathing gets labored enough where you are having difficulty talking or having a conversation, you're probably pushing yourself too much. If you want more specific kind of heart rate guidelines, that is very individual. So you will wanna to talk to your doctor about that and get some, um, if you are looking for some heart rate ranges or um, which what's my heart rate should not go above. You wanna, um, that is also very dependent on what your individual resting heart rate would be as well. So intensity wise, if you're looking for very specific heart rate guidelines, you should ask your medical provider but generally speaking, if you can have a conversation and talk, which let's face it, when you're pregnant, especially later in the pregnancy, I mean, we're short of breath anyway, right? So we want to, we want to try to, um, our, our intensity will automatically come down compared to like a pre-pregnancy level. Okay, so first I wanted to take a moment to talk about pool. Pool is one of the absolute best modes of exercise that you can do when you're pregnant or during the postpartum period. At Impact, we have a warm water therapy pool here, and I would say almost all of our pregnancy or postpartum patients that we see here will be in the pool in some capacity, and usually the later they get in their pregnancy, they choose or would like to be in there more. Um, it really takes a lot of pressure off of your joints, your spine, your pelvic floor. It is a great um, mode if you have it available to you. So. Check out your community pools, health club pools. Um, if you are lucky enough to have one in your home or in your apartment building, great. Again, there's usually some other options too if you find a place that has a pool, like an assisted living or a, an apartment building, sometimes they will let outside people come in and, and use it for a fee. So check all your options out there, even if it's just a kind of a temporary thing to get you through your pregnancy, it can really help. We are actually gonna do a totally separate episode that's gonna be fully dedicated to the pool that we will do in our pool here, um, giving you some ideas for various exercises and activities you can do while you're in the pool to help alleviate some pain, discomfort, and also just keep your muscles working um, and kind of pliable during the pregnancy, so in postpartum period. So keep an eye out for that, that's gonna be coming soon. But otherwise, I wanna talk mostly about uh, land-based exercise modes. So first of all, walking, whether it be on a treadmill or outside on a track, um, we're gonna talk about that first. Generally speaking, it's much better to uh, use a, I'd, I'd rather have people walking outside um, or inside or just on the ground rather than a treadmill. And the reason is that the treadmill belt, because the belt kind of assists you, especially if you're walking on the treadmill or even walking fast on the treadmill, the, tr the treadmill belt is going to assist your foot to, to come back behind you. And when it does that, it doesn't, you, your body doesn't have the ability to use your butt muscles, your glutes as well as they would if you were to just be walking like outside on the ground. Your glutes would normally propel your whole body weight forward. 
treadmill belt kind of assists them to do that. So if you have the option, it's much better to be doing it outside if you can, or on an indoor track. If you live near a high school or a middle school or a college that has an outdoor and indoor track option, that's great because it's nice and level. Um, also, if you, um, weather, weather doesn't permit you to be outside to walk, going to like a mall or something like that, again, level ground, easier to kind of go at your own pace. Um, if you are using a treadmill, the one thing that I would say to consider is try bringing up the incline on the treadmill. So it's like you're walking uphill. That will help because it forces you to kind of uh, bend your weight forward a little bit. And when you do that, you flex and take a little pressure off of your back, which is really helpful when you're pregnant because usually we, um, if you've seen some of the previous episodes, we put a lot of extra pressure on our back because the baby, the weight of the baby is pulling forward on our spine. So by walking on an up, uphill incline, that can sometimes help kind of combat that a little bit and balance that out. Similarly, if you're outside and you have the ability to walk up a hill, um, that's great. The problem is if you're outside, usually you then have to go back down the hill to start over. And walking down the hill actually is gonna do the opposite. So it's going to kind of put more pressure on your back. So if you're someone who is doing it outside and can walk forward up a hill and then either walk slowly backwards down the hill, as long as you feel safe doing that, or I would walk sideways down the hill, but I wouldn't turn around and walk forward down the hill because again, it forces you to shift your weight back and put way more pressure on your back, which let's face it, there's already a ton of pressure on your back when you're pregnant. So we wanna to try to avoid that. So generally speaking, if you're walking, again, I would choose, if you're using a treadmill, use an incline. If you're not, um, usually that's a little bit better, uh, but try to um, make sure that you're not choosing walking as your mode of exercise if you feel like you have pain with walking or if you feel like you're walking with kind of a limp um, because of pain uh, that would obviously not be the you wouldn't want to push a lot of intensity or distance when you're walking if that's the case all right so now we're going to go i'm going to kind of show you some different machines that are options so most of the things i'm going to show you machine wise unless you have one at happen to have one at home would be something that if you had a gym membership or somewhere you could go um, to use a machine those would be the options and i'm going to give you a few little cues and tips for pregnancy on those machines and then we'll also talk about stairs so let's go okay so ellipticals ellipticals there's a lot of different varieties of ellipticals so i would recommend if you're at a, if you have a health club and they have more than one elliptical choice you try all of them because usually the reason that they get different elliptical choices is because they have different stride lengths, meaning that when your legs are all the way apart, um, some are wider and some are more narrow. So depending on your height, especially if you have shorter legs and a shorter step length, you will want to have something that doesn't feel like it's really stretching your legs apart a lot because obviously on ellipticals, you're kind of stuck with the same trajectory. You can move an incline up and down a lot of times on, on the machines, but you cannot change the, how far the feet go apart. So make sure when you put your feet in the, um, in the rungs here that you have them at the same spot on both sides and that they point straight ahead. So you do not want them to point out to the side a little bit or in. You want them to point straight ahead and then you can decide how narrow or how far apart they are it should be about hip width so they usually have pretty wide pedals so that you can um, decide based on your hip width how narrow or how wide you want your stance to be and then when you're doing an elliptical i would start out hanging on to the bars in the front until you if it's um, if you've never done it before but what you're gonna do is, I would recommend actually going backwards instead of forwards. Sometimes, um, most of them will allow you to go backwards. A lot of them have like a reverse mode button or a program where it will actually track you a little bit better um, for your like stats on the machine. 
but when you go backwards it's easier to stay on your heels and keep your weight back over your heels and keep your butt under which is what i'm going to want you to do so when i go forward it's easier for me to put more weight toward my knee in the front of my foot and again that um, puts more pressure on my back so generally speaking whether i'm going forward or backward or if you like to go forward i would um advise you to switch off side uh, meaning go forward for two minutes backward for one minute forward for two minutes backward for one minute or you could just do a hundred percent going backwards going backwards is actually going to work your muscles a little bit harder so it's going to feel like a harder workout compared to going forwards so if you're used to using an elliptical going forwards usually you will find that it's you'll you won't be able to tolerate the same workout as you could going forwards if you go backwards the whole time so if i go backwards i want again i want my weight toward my heels and i want to keep my my butt kind of rolled under a little bit like this i do not want to um, go like this where i'm arching my back like this I can actually, when I'm just demonstrating that, I can actually feel that in my pelvic bone. <laughs> so you're gonna roll under and either go backwards or you can alternate. But if you go forward, just keep in mind that you want to keep your weight centered over your heels. So don't get too far forward. So along with that, if you're using the arms on the elliptical, you want to try to keep them so that they simulate more of like a normal stride, like running stride or walking stride, meaning you don't wanna hang on way up here because people don't run or walk like this, right? So you wanna to try to keep them lower so your shoulders stay down and you wanna just experiment with it. So like, for example, this machine, you probably can tell, but when I hang on to these bars, although I do like that it helps my body have some reciprocal movement, it does kind of pull me forward onto my toes when I do that. So if you find that when you hang on, no matter where I hang on here, that it's sort of forcing me onto my toes, I would prefer that you either hang on with one hand for balance and swing the other one, or if you feel balanced enough, you can do it this way and just move your arms. You can hang on both here, but Keep in mind that generally, if our legs are moving back and forth in a walking motion, our arms should be reciprocally moving as well to help take the pressure off of your back. If you're locking your arms up by doing this and then moving your legs, your body does put more pressure on your spine. So generally, if you're holding on here for balance, I would swing one, at least one arm at your side and then you can kind of switch off or if you feel balanced enough, you can do like this. So that's an elliptical. If standing up on an elliptical is bothersome to you, I'm gonna show you basically a sitting down version of an elliptical. We use, we call it a biodex here. Um, some people, uh, I'm trying to think of all the different names <laughs> of it. But basically, it's a seated elliptical, so you're, you're doing the same kind of walking motion in a sitting down position. So we'll go there next. Okay, so here is the seated elliptical version, also known as the biodex or a semi-recumbent elliptical. It basically is a sitting down version of an elliptical, and your um, back can be supported. So I like this because if it hurts to be upright, walking, weight-bearing, then it's a nice option to be able to sit down and have some back support while you exercise. So you're gonna scoop back and you wanna adjust how far the seat is away so that when I push my foot all the way out, my knee has a slight bend in it, but it is not all the way straight and it is certainly not locking back. So I'm gonna also adjust my feet on the pedals so that they're pointing straight, not turned out or in. And also, um, I wanna adjust how narrow or wide they are so that they are not, um, so they're about hip width apart. So again, usually um, a recumbent elliptical will have an option for you to flip these up and hang on down here, 
or you can hang on here or you can rest your hands in this case on the armrest if you wanted to again i highly recommend using the arms if um, if it's comfortable for you and it doesn't bother you so with this when you go you'll want to push whoops, there we go um, push through your heels as you go and a lot of times um, some of the elliptical versions both standing and sitting will have an arm option where they basically want you to drive the motion with your arms so you're really pulling and driving it with your arms instead of pushing with your legs so much um, I do not recommend that because again it's not very functional it's not really how our bodies are supposed to work we're supposed to really propel ourselves with our legs all right there we go <laughs> So when I go, I'm pushing through my heels as I go. And again, this arm swing, you can adjust how far back your arm is coming. It should feel nice and easy and kind of free, just similar to like uh, moving your arms at your sides. It should just kind of facilitate that. Um, when you're doing this, your knees should be coming straight up. So the one thing with pregnancy, if you're really, really late in pregnancy and you feel like, I cannot bring my knee straight up. It has to go around my baby to the side. So like I have to kind of do this. This would not be a good option for you. So if it's not comfortable for you to keep your knees coming straight up toward the ceiling, um, you obviously can adjust your seat a little bit back and forward, but you still don't want to get it to that your knee is um, locking back every time you, uh, every time it straightens. Um, I think that's about it on this one. So um, similarly, we're gonna do a bike, a recumbent bike option that is gonna be a lot of this kind of same, same types of things that we're gonna talk about. So let's go to there next. Okay, so when it comes to bikes, obviously if you're biking outside, sometimes an upright bike can put a lot of pressure on your pelvic floor. If that's comfortable for you and you can still do that pain-free, go for it. Um, you also have to be careful if you're outdoor biking from a balance safety perspective. Obviously, you wouldn't want to fall. Um, but from a, from a stationary bike, if you have the choice of doing an upright bike versus a what this is called as a recumbent bike at the gym, I would choose the recumbent bike option because it has the back support and it allows you to have your back be more supported and kind of you can push your back into the chair. Um, similar to what we were doing with the recumbent elliptical. So similar to that setup, when, you, when you're sitting, you want to adjust your seat so that when your leg goes all the way out, it's um, straight, just about straight, but a tiny little bend in it. You do not want it to be all the way straight or locking back. So you want it to be like a, a soft, slight bend. And then usually with a recumbent bike, you can hang on here or up here. I usually recommend down here so it keeps your shoulders and, and neck kind of relaxed. And then you would go around. Now we take the, um, as you'll notice, we take the straps off of this pedal. Usually they have straps on them. Um, you can keep them on. I like it better if you take them off because then you can put your whole heel on the pedal. And when you push through your heel, you get a little bit more glute activity when you bike. And again, your glutes are gonna help you with pregnancy, taking the pressure off of your low back. So it'd be nice. Biking otherwise is a relatively quad dominant activity. You can get, if you have clips on your bike, like on a trainer at home, you can get more hamstring activity, which is great too. Um, however, if you don't have that option, I would put, um, take, the, take the straps off move your foot forward so that you can push through your heel more instead of the ball of your foot. When you're pushing through the ball of your foot, it makes it more dominant for the fronts of your thighs and puts more pressure on your knees. So again, similar to the seated elliptical, if you feel like having your knee come up so high really puts pushes into your belly that to the point where you have to turn it out, then this would not be the activity for you. I would say that from a recumbent bike standpoint, your knees do have to come up higher on, this, on something like this compared to a, an elliptical that we just showed you. So if you're having trouble with this, I would try if you have the option to do the elliptical because the motion is a little bit less, your knee doesn't flex up as much. So you'll have more space 
um, so that you're not compressing into, into your baby as much. <laughs> so now we're gonna talk about stairs. So let's go there next. Okay, so last we're gonna talk about stairs. I really like stairs as another option if walking bothers you, but you're okay on stairs or vice versa. Um, they're also something that a lot of times people just have available to them at home, or if you're in an apartment building, perhaps you're out in the hallway, but most people have relative access to some kind of stairs uh, that they can um, use and not have to disrupt their life in terms of going to get a membership at a gym or anything like that. So it's a really nice option. If you find that your stairs at home are really steep and that bothers you, you may wanna try just stacking up either some books that are, as long as it's sturdy, using a stool, using on, this is just an aerobic step. Um, that's a little bit smaller than your standard stair and see if your body can tolerate that. And if it can tolerate that better, you can use that instead. But stairs is a nice functional exercise. The, um, you can also use a, at a gym, like there's the stair stepper machines. There's generally two types of stair steppers. One that looks actually like real stairs that kind of revolves around and it looks like you're literally climbing real stairs. I would definitely choose that one over the other option, which is like two pedals. It's like a stair stepper machine where it just has two pedals and they go up and down. Um, that's a little bit less functional and it tends to have your body overuse your, the fronts of your hips as opposed to um, balancing like the fronts and the backs. Um, so it uses more hip flexor, less glute on that type of machine compared to the revolving stair um, stair stepper. Uh, um, again, similar to walking, if you have the choice, I would always just choose the regular stairs to use because that's much more functional and it's going to be um, training your body how to use your glutes when you're doing stairs just generally. So it kind of has a dual purpose. So from a stair point of view, the one thing that I would say is trying to take your uh, pelvis and kind of um, turn it under a little bit. So it's like you're um, almost like bringing the baby up toward your face, or if you were wearing a belt, like bringing your belt buckle up toward your face and tucking your butt under. So it flattens your lower back a little bit, and it also keeps your abs engaged a little bit. We don't want like a really strong ab contraction because your abs are really lengthened with the pregnancy, so they're kind of at a disadvantage. However, we do want a low level contraction, especially with these side oblique abs. So you're gonna turn under and just kind of gently hold that. And you wanna try to keep your weight through your heels. So some of this is gonna depend on how high intensity you're doing with the stairs. If I go really fast up the stairs, there's no way I can keep my weight on my heels. However, I'm just kind of going steady with myself. I can usually keep my weight on my heels. So what I mean by that is when I put my foot on the step, whether you're using a step like this or you're using your stairs at home, I prefer that you can put your entire foot on the step and not have to turn it to the side to fit it on the step. So if you put your entire foot on the step, push up through your heel to lift. And then when you lower, you can switch um, lower kind of with your body through your heel. So obviously if I was using regular stairs, I would just keep going up and then I would go down the stairs. Or you, if you want, you could just stay on the bottom step and just do this. So again, you're gonna practice leading with one and then you would switch. Or you can, and then you would wanna switch at some point where you're leading with the opposite one. The most important part is that you're keeping this turned over under a little bit and that you're lifting and lowering with the weight in your heel. If you're having pain in your knee, um, I would try, make sure, first of all, a lot of times if you push too much with the ball of your foot, you, the pressure will go to your knee. So make sure you're keeping your weight back on your heel. If you're having pain despite that, what you can try to do is take your hip, the hip that's, if, if I lift my right foot up on this step, it would be my right hip that is kind of hiking up a little bit toward the ceiling, and then I'm gonna push. And then when I lower, I, I think about as I lower through my heel, my hip is gonna kind of come up as I lower as well. And then same thing on the other side. So again, push through the heel, hike the hip, lift. 
and then hike, um, let the hip hike when you lower it down. So that can help with knee pain. If you feel like you try that and it doesn't help and you're still having knee pain, then you probably should just pick a different mode of exercise. Again, this should feel like it gets your heart rate up, but it should not feel painful. You should not feel unstable in your pelvis or have hip or butt or knee pain or back pain for that matter with any of this. And if you do, you should stop. So at first, if you're doing it and you're feeling fine, there may come a time where you get to a point where all of a sudden you have pain and at that point you should stop. Usually that means that you're getting to the point where your muscles are fatiguing to the point where you're getting more um, instability because your muscles are so tired that they can't stabilize your pelvis and joints appropriately. And at that point it's better to stop because if you keep pushing yourself at that point, you're just gonna increase the inflammation in your joints, which will not make for a fun day tomorrow. <laughs> all right, thank you so much for watching. If you found anything in this video helpful, please like the video and subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you get notifications for all of our upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, take care.